So in the last two years, probably the biggest request I have gotten is, hey DT, can you take a look at Hyperland? When are you gonna do some video content about Hyperland? I get this question so many times. Uh, probably thousands of you guys have asked me about Hyperland. And I never would do video content about it because I had an NVIDIA machine and Hyperland just didn't work on my home computer. And if I can't actually use it on my home computer, the computer I spend most of my time in and actually live in it properly, it's hard to make video content about something that you can't actually daily drive on the machine you spend most of your time on. So, you know, I, I wasn't able to do much on Hyperland, but recently, you know, the NVIDIA drivers have gotten a lot better. So my home computer has that NVIDIA card, but really with the driver series, uh, the 560 series, it's really gotten to the point where Hyperland and NVIDIA should work. So I installed it last night, spent a couple of hours playing around with it on my home computer, and it was working just fine. So now that Hyperland works on my home computer, I went ahead and spent a couple hours today also trying it out here on my workstation here at my office. This is an AMD machine. Hyperland installed just fine here. Seems to be working fine. I'm recording right now in OBS. It's recording the screen. I, I did have to jump through a little bit of a hoop to get OBS working, but I'll discuss that in just a second. But right now I've got Hyperland up and running. I've made uh, some simple configuration changes. I was basically a default config, a default Hyperland config and a default Waybar config with right now some very minor changes. I added a few key bindings, but it's essentially me day one on Hyperland. Now, for those of you that want to install Hyperland and try it out, there is some things you have to do to get this to work, especially on Arch Linux, which you know I'm running an Arch Linux based distribution. There's a number of dependencies you need to install. So let me open up my Emacs here and you know, I made some notes here. Let me zoom in. This line here, this is the very first thing I did. I did a sudo pacman dash capital S for install. I installed Hyperland itself. I also installed XDG desktop portal Hyperland, Waybar, Wofi, which is a Rofi run launcher, except it's for Wayland. No, it's called Wofi. Kitty, because the default Hyperland config expects Kitty to be your terminal. Now, uh, I'm using Alacrity for my terminal, but initially, go ahead and install Kitty, and then if, when you change your terminal emulator to whatever it is you want to use in your config, just delete Kitty after that. Hyperpaper, which draws the uh, wallpaper on the screen. Hypercursor, Hyperutils, Hyperland-Scanner. I did a Power-Profiles-Daemon. And then later, when I was having some issues with screen sharing, screen capturing here in OBS, I went ahead and installed the following programs, uh, Grim, Slurp, Hyperpicker, and XDG Desktop Portal dash WLR. Now this one here, this Desktop Portal WLR, I needed this to get the screen capture to actually work properly in OBS. I installed that package and then rebooted the machine and then OBS now is actually recording my desktop. Now once you have all of this installed, you need to go ahead and create your config files for Hyperland and for Waybar. There are default example configs. So the default config for Hyperland would be found in user include Hyperland source config. The default config for Waybar is in slash Etsy XDG Waybar config. And then you need to take those example configs and copy them over to your home directory. They, of course, need to go in your home directory slash dot config slash hyper for the Hyperland config. The Hyperland config is hyperland.conf. And then you need to copy over the default waybar config and put it in dot config slash waybar. And then it's a config.json.c. And I've got an extra file here that I don't need, but config.json.c. Now, even though I've spent a few hours playing around in Hyperland last night and this afternoon, I really haven't done too much uh, customization because I spent most of my time installing things and just making sure things work. You know, right? There was some trial and error to get some basic things working, like the screen sharing and OBS and things. So I really haven't customized much as far as the config. If I go into .config slash hyper slash hyperland.conf, here is my Hyperland config. And for the most part, it's the default Hyperland config. Uh, I did have to configure some monitors. Uh, this is the monitor set up for my home computer. Now this is different than this office computer. Uh, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm actually gonna source a second file for this monitor information. And the reason is, if I set this monitor information for my home computer, and then the monitor information for this computer, 
uh, their the monitor names and resolutions are different. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to source this file, this monitors file. That way I, I can have the same config on my home computer and this computer. The only difference will be this file that they source for their monitor information. I hope that kind of makes sense. But if you don't have to sync the same config between multiple machines like I do, you can just set up your monitors like this. Basically, the way this works is you do monitor and then the monitor name and then the resolution and then the position if you're using multiple monitors and then the scale. So if you need to zoom in or whatever. Scrolling down a little bit, uh, I changed some of these variables uh, in the config. By default, they had this terminal variable set to kitty, of course. I set it to alacrity. I went ahead and set the file manager to PCMANFM. By default, it's set to Thunar. Uh, the menu is Wofi. And then I added these variables here. I added this variable for Emacs because I'm going to have several key bindings that involve Emacs. And I need this string repeated multiple times, the Emacs client string here. And then I have this variable here for reset. And this is this command here for hyper CTL dispatch submap reset. What this is used for is I wanted to have some key chords. Key chords is where, uh, like Emacs style key chords, where I do, for example, super E and then I release and and then another key to do something, for example, super E, E launches Emacs, right? So they don't actually call them key chords, they call them submaps. The way the submap works is I do super E and then it waits for me to hit another key, for example, E to launch Emacs, but then I'm still in that submap. It's still waiting for me to do something. For example, hit escape to get out of the submap. I didn't want to have to constantly hit escape every time I did a key chord. So this reset command is going to fix that. Scrolling down, you've got some auto start information. By default, it had this line here where it executes once Waybar and Hyperpaper. Uh, this is Waybar, the panel at the top. I went ahead and added this line to go ahead and launch the Emacs daemon when I log in. Also, as standard for all my configs, I automatically start the Emacs server on all of my tiling window managers. Then you've got some environmental uh, things here, some environment stuff. Uh, these are default things, these three here. Now these three that are commented out are experimental things I was playing around with on my NVIDIA machine. I don't know if I necessarily need these enabled on my home computer now that the NVIDIA drivers are better, but I did see some posts on the Hyperland site uh, suggesting some of these variables. So I may or may not need those. I'm not really sure. Then you've got information about gaps and border sizes. I haven't played with anything as far as modifying any kind of styling and uh, layouts. I haven't played with anything. I really don't even know what all the layouts are available. And Hyperland because again, I spent really the last few hours playing with it, mainly just trying to get it to work, trying to get uh, Hyperland itself to work, trying to get Waybar to work. And then, you know, when I was thinking about making today's video, I opened OBS and I noticed OBS wasn't recording my desktop. It didn't show the desktop. I had to investigate that problem. So really it's just mainly me just getting it up and running right now. So, you know, going forward in this series of videos, then we'll actually start getting into some of the actual configuration options. Here's the uh, keyboard layout and things. Uh, here are the actual key bindings here. Now by default, Fault, the super key is set as the mod key, which is fine. That's what I use. I did play around with some of the default key bindings. For example, I always use super enter or super return to launch a terminal. That's not the default key binding they were using. They were using something different. So I've got super enter to open a terminal. Super shift C closes the window with focus and super shift Q will actually kill Hyperland. Um, so those are always standard key bindings I have in every single window manager that I use. I also do super shift enter to launch my run launcher, which is typically Rofi. In this case, it's going to be Wofi. Then you've got key bindings for moving focus. So if I open a few windows, moving focus with the arrows, you can see they're using just your standard arrow keys as far as up, down and left and right. For me, I went ahead and I copied that section and then pasted it here. I also added bindings for HJKL because I'm used to uh, moving focus with the Vim key. So I will do HJK and L to move focus between the windows instead of the arrow keys. Then obviously you got super one through zero to switch from workspaces one through 10, yada, yada, yada. The only other major things I played with, I wanted to get the key chords because I'm a big key chord kind of guy. I have a ton of key bindings. So I added this section here for my Emacs related key chords. So when I enter super E, 
it waits for another key to be hit. So for example, if I hit super E and then E, it runs the Emacs command. Remember I set that variable for Emacs. If I do super E followed by A, it runs EMS, uh, an audio player. If I do super E followed by B, it opens iBuffer. You know, it lists all the buffers in Emacs that are currently open. If I do super E B, you know, this is of course iBuffer. Let me close that. Super E D would be Dear Ed, the file manager inside Emacs. And you guys remember that reset variable at the top of my config, you need to prepend all of these commands with this reset variable. That's very important. That means uh, when you finish running this command, you reset the submap. Otherwise, the submap would still be enabled and I would actually have to do some key binding to escape out of it. I would actually have to hit the escape key in this case to reset the submap, to get out of the submap. But because I have that reset thing here, uh, as soon as I hit a command that actually does something, for example, super E D, I'm out of the submap. Where if I didn't have that, I'd still be in it, and I couldn't actually do anything until I hit escape to actually get into you know normal key bindings again. Now the waybar config is a little more confusing as far as the standard waybar config. I haven't done much with it, so this is the config.json-c. I have noticed that my fonts in Emacs are actually a little smaller <laughs> in Hyperland than what they are on X11 uh, window managers, so I may need to play with my fonts either uh, directly in Emacs, or I may have to adjust the scale in Hyperland, but for right now, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in anyway on a video so you guys can see what's going on with this config. But this is very much like a polybar config. If you've ever used polybar, waybar, it's very similar as far as your modules, left, center, and right. So the modules to the left, I, I don't know what works, what doesn't. I've got Hyperland spaces and Hyperland submap, so the uh, workspaces, that's those Hyperland submap. If I do super E, yeah, it shows me that I'm currently in the Emacs submap. If I escape out of it, you know, I'm out of the submap. So that's kind of neat. And then the modules in the center are Hyperland slash window. That's the window name. Modules to the right. They got a million things enabled. Some of them are not working because I'm not using things. For example, like MPD is not currently launched yet. I don't have a battery because I'm not on a laptop. So a lot of modules here I'm not actually going to use. But, you know, what is here, you know, it looks cool. Obviously, I'm going to theme it and, you know, configure it. I'm going to, you know, change some of the colors and styling and everything. But for right now, you know, this is what I've got working here. Here's a little example configuration of how you can configure the workspaces with uh, their own little icons and everything. Uh, this was all stuff that was just uh, either from the default config itself or it was a copy paste job from like Hyperland documentation and stuff like that. Again, I really haven't done much with uh, the configuration of Waybar yet either, but going forward, I'm pretty excited about it. I think this is going to be a fun little uh, project now that I can actually use it because I've been wanting to use Hyperland really since you guys have been asking me about it about two years ago I wanted to try it out but again I just if it didn't work on my home computer it just didn't make sense but now I'm gonna dive into this rather deep we're gonna get some video content the more I configure things like Hyperland and Waybar the more I learn of course I'm gonna share it with you guys those of you that want to follow along with my journey as far as following my config file as it evolves check out my GitLab repository over on gitlab.com slash dwt1 that's my GitLab look for my dot file repository. That's where you're going to find all of my configs. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch, and Vador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tenrin, War Gentle, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest-tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick first look at Hyperland would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about fantastic free and open source software like Hyperland, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.